So we're back in uh, motion again, and what we're doing here is uh, the Cape Guineas, and um, already that time of the year, weather-wise, uh, Job have just uh, got hit with this cold front, eh, Daryl? Hi, uh, a cold front set in, I think, till around about uh, Monday, Tuesday, and then it starts warming up. Doesn't appear to be much rain forecast, and uh, I think the track will come up good on Sunday. Yeah, it will come up good, I believe, too. Um, we're doing this bright and early Friday morning, just by the way, so uh, that you guys are aware. And Darren, that we are focusing on Cape Town today. How's it there? Glorious, normally glorious weather. What's it, are you feeling anything? Or is, it, or is it as good as it normally is? It's as good as it normally is this time of year. The weather is beautiful at the moment. Lovely. And we can expect a big day's racing in Cape Town with some, I think, four feature races on the card including a grade one race. Um, in Joburg, the weather has caused havoc in the last two weeks with the results, um, with the penetrometer being a bit on the soft side. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Joburg might be uh, a bit more dry tomorrow, so we might, we might be back in form. All right, yeah, it goes like that. And you've been in, uh, in and out form, so to speak. Tip, I've watched you during the week. You've been tipping winners and... Uh... Certainly uh, on Thursday afternoon, I think it was, that you had a, quite a good day, I noticed there on, on, your, on your selections. Yes, uh, my best bet and my value bet uh, arrived yesterday, and the double did work out to 20 to 1. It was well Champompa, Champizi, and Winter Royale. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. was a nice comeback to form, and let's hope it continues into the new season, uh, into Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, well, we need it now. Christmas is next week. All right. Well, on that note uh, of good form, we are giving, Betway is giving away two West Ham United jerseys that are autographed by the team uh, with an attached letter of authenticity, if you like. It's an authenticated letter that comes with it. And um, that's to our WhatsApp groups. To the, so those of you that are on it and participating and playing on there with them, um, you stand the chance of, of winning one of those. And they'll announce the winners on, uh, on Christmas Day. So... Hopefully you're you're in it and that you're playing and part of uh, all of the good things. That's the number that you send your name to. Just send your name. If your name is Peter, send Peter to 0691643272. And you can be part of all of the fun uh, that is coming. So it's Cape Town that we're going to stay with. And uh, let's do that. Focus on, if we may, um, the opening leg of the, the, the pick six. And we'll start where Bereave is top of the boards uh, right now. Um, at uh, two to one with uh, MBRX at four to one. And then the two, pleased to meet you, is currently trading at six to one. So I'm going to start because we're, we're in the Cape. Let's go to Darren first and just get some sort of idea as to, Darren, how you see the opening leg of the pick six? I see it uh, as quite an open race. I haven't taken any chances yet. I'm starting with Bereave. Now, he ran a cracker in the Cape Merchants. Uh, he jumped a bit awkwardly. He had a bit of ground to make up. And he really was running on strongly towards the finish uh, to get beaten by rank outside of Vikram that day. Um, on that run, he holds Amberix, pleased to meet you, and World's Your Oyster. Um, but I do believe Amberix is going to come on a lot from that run under the belt. Uh, and the 11, drop back to 1100 can suit him as well. So I'll make Amberix a big runner. Uh, pleased to meet you. Uh, he wasn't too consistent last season. But he seems to be uh, getting uh, into top form again, and he hasn't got a lot of ground to make up on horses like Bereave. So he's one for the shortlist. Uh, World's Your Oyster, last time out, ran a bit of a flat race, but on his day, he's very effective over this sort of trip, and he likes to go start to finish tactics. Then this horse resonates. Uh, he won a cracker with 61 kilos last time out when dropped back in trip. Uh, he came from the back of the field. He made up steady progress and took over the lead with quite some ease. Uh, so with only 52 kilos on his back, Resonate's got to be a, a runner. Another two horses I want to touch on in this race are Safe Return, who should improve back in trip and with the blinkers on again. And then uh, a comp rank outsider I have included is Elusive Trader. Now he's an 1100 meter specialist. A thousand's too short, 1200's too far. Um, I think he has previously won this, uh, the Southeaster Sprint. And um, I think he's in with a chance at around 20 to 1. So I'm making it wide open. 
in the fourth race of the uh, first leg of the pick six. Yeah, I see Lisa Trader, for those who don't know, is number six on the card, and as uh, Darren, you didn't choose any price. So it's open for you. Daryl, do you see it the same way? It does look very competitive, Pluck. Uh, you can see the market's dominated by the Cape Merchants formula. But I'm actually looking elsewhere. I love the way he resonate when his last start. He traveled the dream. He always looked to be in control of that race. And I think with a five pound penalty, that might prove to be on the lenient side. I think he's certainly on the upgrade and he's got a lot more to offer. So he's going to be my first pick. I also like uh, number eight, safe return. Uh, he's had excuses in his last two starts. Traveled a bit too hard over the seven furlongs. And I think judge on that performance, the dropping trip is certainly going to be a positive. And then you have to respect Bereave, cracking effort in the merchants last time out. He did pick up five, a five pound penalty for that performance. But in saying that he's ultra consistent and he'll give up his best once again. And then MBRX, he's certainly better than that effort. Uh, he's going to come on leaps, leaps and bounds from that return last time. And uh, I'm certainly expecting him to go forward and uh, and uh, uh, reverse that form line. I think he may, he may well prove to be much, much better than that effort. And then, uh, like you say, pleased to meet you. He's a killer and a half better off for a length and a quarter beating by Bereave. He's, uh, he's going to give another honest performance. I think it's a very tricky first leg of the pick six. I'm leaning towards the bottom weight resonates, although he's only a half a kilogram under sufferance. I think he's still got a lot more to offer and could still be ahead of the handicapper. Yeah. So it might be a nice quartet to catch this if it's that difficult. And maybe we can do a floating, maybe we do a double floating or something to that effect. Yeah. I'd, personally, I look at double floating safe return and, uh, and resonates. I think, um, I think there's a good chance that they'll both finish in the top four and, uh, and float around with a few others. Mm, so it's eight and nine that you're referring to. Numbers eight and nine, maybe double floaters of the field. All right, well, let's go to race five then, uh, Darren. I'll stay with you for the moment. We're Marina's odds on at nine to ten uh, to win this uh, for uh, Candace Bass Robinson. And um, uh, she's, yeah, she's hard, it looks hard. Well, she looks hard to beat. Uh, there's obviously a raider coming in there from Port Elizabeth, Santa Teresa. We'll talk about her. But um, is, is Marina, the, uh, would, you, would you go? Head on and uh, and, and make and, and sort of secure as you're playing, Marina, Dar uh, Daryl. Uh, Clyde, if you don't bank a Marina, then you have to put four or five runners uh, because it does get quite competitive thereafter. Uh, just judging at the best weighted column, Chachin comes up best three pounds ahead of the likes of Centered Mistress and Marina. <laughs> but uh, Chachin and Centered Mistress last time out in a, I think it was a, a progress plate. They were very, very disappointing. They were weighted to dominate that, that um, race, and they actually finished last and second last. So I thought uh, they need to step up the game from that. Whereas the likes of Marina, her comeback run of the seven furlongs, arguably uh, against arguably the best filly of a, uh, seven furlongs and a mile in the country, Captain's Ransom, was a cracking effort because she's nowhere near a seven furlong filly. And then she got stepped up to a mile. It was a workman-like performance. She got the job done. I think she's heading into this victory stakes, victory stakes, cherry, cherry ripe. And um, she's going to be nearing her peak fitness, along with the fact that she gets an extra furlong, which is a big, big positive. Mm. And I'm sure Elder Demay has had the, the choice of either choosing Cha-Ching or Marina, and he's opted to ride Marina. I think she's going into this race on a high with a lot of positive behind her name. She's certainly the one to beat. So I've taken a, a stance and I've banked Marina in my pick six. If you aren't as conv convinced as what I am, you're going to have to back up with the likes of Cha-Ching, Centered Mistress, the PE Raider, Centered Teresa. Um, because it does certainly get quite competitive thereafter. But mm. Marina, for me, in our art. In our art, okay. Your approach, uh, Darren, I mean, would you take 9 to 10 Marina, just as a matter of interest, Darren? Well, if you exclude the PE Raider, Santa Therese, who I made a runner, then Marina does look very close to a good thing. Um, her comeback run over 1,400 was a decent effort. 
And then she followed it up with a really good win over a mile last time out. Uh, this trip is going to suit her down to the ground even further than this. She's even entered for the Met. And uh, I think she's one of the better four-year-old fillies around at the moment in the country. Um, she's going to be cherry ripe and hard to beat. Now, this filly Santa Therese, uh, probably the best filly to ever come out of PE that, uh, since I've been alive. Um, she's really impressed me in the past. Sure. Uh, a lot can say that she didn't beat much, but it's the manner in which she does it. Uh, four runs back, she traveled four wide around the bend and into the straight, and she still won hands and heels. And then three runs back when Grant van Niekak, I think, rode her. She was 10 lengths back at the 800. Um, she was close to the back of the field in like 14th position. And she cruised through, sliced through the field with under the hands and won by three and three quarter lengths. Uh, she could have won by 12 if, if he extended her. So I really think that she's a decent filly. And I did make a, a, a post on Facebook a while ago saying that if Santa Therese does travel down to Cape Town, I do believe that she'll be very competitive against the best of ours. So I'm going four and six, and I'm taking the exactors four and six boxed. Um, a horse like Rain in Newmarket, she always bl blows the start. She loses two or three lengths. And over the 1800 meter trip, I think that's stretching her a little bit. So I don't think she can get involved, but I'll make it between four and six. Okay, so so you said you make a statement. This is the best you've seen in Port Elizabeth since you started the racing. Best, the best I've seen come out of PE um, that I can think of. Oh, that's unreal, eh? Okay, well that's good to well. Uh, I suppose in my way it may well be two plays for some people then on that basis. Let's go. I'll stay with you, Darren, and and have a look at the sixth race at eighteen hundred, where Hood spread tops the boards at um, eighteen to ten. Uh, uh, one way traffic, second choice at three to one. The two uh, right from five to one. Um, and then six to one a better about the others. Um, I, I don't know what you what what you make of it. Uh, I, I've noticed that um, hood spread is naturally the horse to beat, but does have sixty kilos to shoulder. Yes, and you know he did uh, receive an eight pound penalty for winning in PE last time, beating horses like Find Me Unafraid. So it's it's going to be tougher for him. Uh, he's progressive. He's done really well this season. And he, he does look the horse to beat, and he looks like a big runner here. But there are dangers. Uh, this horse, Super Silvano, ran second in the race last year. Uh, I think I would put a line through his last run. He was never really in the hunt. And he can be very effective with only 55 kilos on his back. Mm. And then one-way traffic with only 52 and a half kilos on his back. Now, this sort of trip is a little bit sharp for him. But if he can not make the pace because there is a horse like Rocking Ringo in the race, but if he sits up there with the speed, he's just going to be keep on galloping at the same pace. And he may just outstay them towards the finish with only 52 and a half kilos on his back. Um, others to consider Rocking Ringo. He's a strong front runner. And if he can slow the pace down to suit himself, he could be staying on at the finish. And then Fire Alley. It's hard to say if you'll see out the 1800 meters trip. In the past, he hasn't. And um, yeah, I have thrown him in, but um, I think that, that the 1800 is stretching him a little bit. Mm. So have you gone horses wide in the big six? What have you done? I've gone one, four, six, eight, and nine. I've left yeah. out Vikram. I see he is in the betting. He won a very good comeback race after a long break uh, over the 1200 meter trip. But uh, not for me, second run after rest. Okay. Daryl, let's, let's bring you in here and get your take on the, on the, on the race. Uh, Clark, firstly, I think Hood Spread's far too short, short in the market. I think he's going to drift out. Uh, based on the fact that he did pick up the eight-pound penalty when winning the Algoa Cup, beating uh, not the greatest of heels, in all honesty. Um, he's going to be made to carry his weight. He's going to have to give them start and wait and uh, run the, his best race of his career to, to win the Peninsula Handicap on Saturday. If he does, I'll be super, super impressed. Uh, I think Super Silvano will get much closer, if not reverse the form with him. I can just put a run through his, his run in the Algo Cup. He was out at the back in a slow run race. Race certainly wasn't run to suit him. I'm expecting him to go forward. And with a four and a half kilogram turnaround in the weights, I won't be surprised to see him reverse the form with Hood Spread. 
And then the bottom weights, you have to believe that they're going to be out there making hood spray carries weight because uh, one way traffic, like Darren said, is over, is a bit on the short side for him. And uh, he's, he's going to go up handy, try and make it into a staying contest and make, make the others come and catch him. So he could certainly keep rolling with, with a postage stamp weight to shoulder. And then I've thrown in Vikram. You know, trainer Andre Nell made it no secret that this horse was flying at home before the Cape Merchants. And uh, he justified his confidence. He won over a distance far short of his best. He is effective over the nine furlongs. So if, he's, if he can put in a similar performance over this trip with that, such a turn of foot, I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see him go back to back. So I've opted to go field. I think it's very competitive. I haven't touched on the likes of Fire Alley and a few others that certainly come into the race with the chance. So I've gone field. I'm looking for an upset. Uh, possibly the likes of Super Silvano or, or uh, one of the roughies, even Nathan Tunkin, I'll be more than happy to shout them home. Yeah, okay. Well, you're making that field and it's open. We've got to the Cape Guineas now, and uh, this is naturally run over 1,600 metres, and they're betting four to one the field. And uh, Cosmic Highway uh, is four to one. The four horse and the five trip of fortune is at four to one. One Waterbury Lane is 13 to two, and the eight horse double superlative is at 13 to two. Two good travelers, my first choice, just by the way, is seven to one. And then 12 uh, Bacayas at eight to one. And they've got 10 to one and better about the others. But I don't know, what's your take on the Guineas field this year, um, uh, Daryl? I mean, some seeming, some uh, comments I've read or heard or whatever seem disappointed with the turnout. Uh, of the quality, so to speak, in, I suppose, comparing to previous years. Would you agree with that? Uh, Clark, I think uh, there's a few of us in here with uh, certainly way above ability, uh, way above average ability, very talented sorts. Um, it's hard to say um, because a few of them have bumped open company and certainly held their own. So I don't think it's the worst crop around. Um, uh, I think uh, Cosmic Highway could could certainly go through the divisions and end up a top top division horse. Yeah. Uh, uh, one or two under the flying under the radar. Um, yeah, I don't know. There might be there might be truth in the matter that uh, some saying it's not the best field, but um, this is what we got to work with, and uh, let's hope there is. They're still young. Let's hope there is a, a champion in there that uh, comes to the limelight. Yeah. Okay, so what's your take of it? What's your... Uh, well, let me start with my first choice. Do you, do you rate Good Traveller at all? Uh, Clyde, last time in the Concord Cup, he was held uh, by Pomp and Power and Cosmic Highway. Uh, but he did have excuses in the latter stages. He's got, he got his tongue over the bit. And I see they've opted to uh, tongue his tie down come Saturday. And he's having his peak run. He's a great one winner in the past. He's got Richard Free from a good draw. He's going to be given every chance. So he'll be there when the, the chips are down. So yes, he's got a chance. Um, then you've got the likes of Universal. That's very, very unexposed, uh, Clyde. I was very impressed with, with his second run after arrest. Um, and I certainly believe we haven't seen anywhere near the best of him yet. Um, he's one for my short list. And... Uh, if there is a rising star in, in, in this field of uh, the Guineas, the Cape Guineas, we, it could be him or, or the likes of Cosmic Highway. Um, then you've got the best weighted uh, horse in the race, and that comes up in, in, the, in the likes of Marigold Hotel. She's the only filly in the race. She gets her two and a half kilogram sex allowance. She's got a cracking draw. Last time out the race, certainly wasn't run to suit her. She was meant to run in the uh, WSB Cape Phillies Guineas uh, last uh, two, weekend, two weekends ago against the likes of uh, Desert Miracle. But uh, she was scratched on that occasion with a skin rash. Um, if things go away, Clyde, she's waited to run a cracker. So you can't discount her chances. Okay. And then on the line through Zavion, I think the Concord Cup form line is going to prove stronger to uh, stronger than the trip to form trip of fortune form line, but I certainly haven't excluded him in the exotics because he is four from five. He's in cracking form, he's getting better with each and every start. 
So I don't want to go out if, if the likes of Triple Four Fortune does win, but he appears to be held by Cosmic Highway and uh, Good Traveller. So mm. I've got a few in this race. Um, if I had to be pushed into a corner, I'd love to see Universal come up trumps. I think he is a horse with a lot of ability and he could, he could be anything. But um, personally, I think it's between Cosmic Highway, Universal, and I'm going with the Philly Marigold Hotel. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we haven't got that up in the betting, but nine uh, Universal is 13 to one at the moment, uh, number nine. And uh, 16 Marigold Hotel is 20 to one. So nine and 16 is what Daryl's uh, referring to. And Marigold Hotel at right now is, um, as you know, just double as long as 20 to one. All right. Well, um, it's, it's an interesting take, uh, the way you put it together, Daryl. Let me ask Darren, because da uh, Darren, you're quite close to Adam, um, to the Marcus stable. So you, you'll know Universal well. Yes, no, he's a lovely horse. Uh, he's a, a brother to Vardy, actually. Uh, he's a big horse. I think he's more of a derby horse than a guineas horse. But if the speed's on, he's going to be staying on really strongly at the finish with big strides. So I wouldn't discount him. But I look forward to him running in the Cape Derby if he runs a good race in the guineas. Um, I'm leaning towards Waterbury Lane. Um, I think he's just improving with each and every start. Uh, he's won both his starts this season over 1,400 meters, beating older horses. Um, and I think he, he's going to be a better horse over a mile. So I think that Grant Burke could uh, ride a guineas double, seeing that he won the guineas last year, his first grade one victory aboard Russian Rock. Yeah. Um, I think he's in with a bright chance of making it a guineas double with Waterbury Lane. Um, horses like Cosmic Highway... He was left with too much to do last time. He turned into the straight way too far back. He got to pump in power and then just ran out of steam the last 50 meters. So I think he's going to be a, a, a big runner in the guineas. So I make my first two choices, the Dean Canamayo horses, the one and four. And then Trip of Fortune, he's a super horse. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he gets, he sees out the mile. Uh, he's won really well over the 1400 meter trip. So if he does see it out, I th he's a massive runner. Um, a horse like Zapatillas, um, he will enjoy this trip. And um, he, he ran an absolute cracker last time out. And I think the, the mile is going to suit him down to the ground. I think he has a wide draw to contend with, but he is one for the shortlist Zapatillas. And then Universal, we've touched on, uh, that I do believe it will be a better horse over 2,000, but I won't be surprised at all if he, if he wins the guineas. And then a horse like uh, the two Snaith runners, um, double superlative. Now, he's entered for the Met, and uh, they obviously rate him very highly with Anton Marcus on board, and he ran a good race last time out over, over a shorter trip, staying on strongly late, and he'll enjoy the mile as well. And then Pakaya is also one that we don't know how good he is. He could be anything, as when he stepped up in trip, he's done nothing wrong. So I do make the guineas wide open, but I do believe that Waterbury Lane and Cosmic Highway are the two floating bankers for the quartet. Are you adding um, 16 Marigold Hotel in your players? Uh, Daryl seems to like her too. No, I don't think she's good enough. Uh, uh, down in the Cape, I think the Joburg, uh, the Joburg horses have a length or two to find. <laughs> you're, you're, you're more superior, eh? Yeah. Cape Town is stronger right now. Okay, well, that's uh, okay. Well, that's interesting on the seventh. The eighth on the card is the final leg of the pot, and I'll stay with you if I can here. Um, Darren, obviously, Warrior was odds-on to win, but he's, uh, Warrior's been taken out. I think it was something like 9 to 10 or, or to that effect, uh, but not running anymore. So this is the, the adjusted market that uh, I got off World Sports Betting, where number seven, my bestie, is at 28 to 10. Two Russian Rockers, three to one. One Casimir is four to one. Four Silver Operator, five to one. And uh, the eight horse uh, Galactic Star, five to one. And the three Russet Air is six to one. So with that coming out now, how does it change your, your take on, on this particular race? Well, I only had Warrior and Silver Operator marked uh, for my pick six. I made it between those two. And now that Warrior's out the race, I see a lot of value with Silver Operator. Um, he's a 1,400-meter specialist. He's won three out of three over course and distance. Um, in his penultimate start over the 1,400 at Durbanville, he ran a cracking second behind Seeking the Stars. He, he chased him home all the way to the line, beaten half a length. 
And I think there's good value to be had with Silver Operator over the 14 at Kenilworth. So I made him my clear first choice and my value bet on the card. Um, for the placings now, Russian Rock won a good race last time, but my bestie was beaten at length by Russian Rock and is now around seven kilos better off at the weights, if I'm not mistaken. So for a length beating, it actually put my bestie ahead of Russian Rock. Um, so for me, Silver Operator, the value in the race, and anything else for the minor placings. All right, so, so you, you're quite confident that with Warrior out, that Silver Operator is clearly the next best horse in the race. Yes, and I see a lot of value in the price at the moment. So that's not going to last. Uh, Daryl, let me bring you in. Would you agree with that take? I do give Silver Operator a big, big chance of you. I'd just like to see him move down to the start in, in uh, times gone by. He hasn't moved down to the start the best. Uh, I'd like to see him striding up and uh, moving well and feeling well on the day. And yes, then you'll be a leading light over here. I made Vuari a penalty kick, Clyde. Unfortunately, he's come out. You know, last time out, he could only get that six pound penalty. Mm. So he was capped at 108. He beat the lights of Rascalian and a commit did them there, 123 and a 127. If Warrior finds a handicap next time out, Clyde, you can empty mm. out, you can take whatever price you want. He can't miss if he's in a handicap next time out. If it's a, <coughs> excuse me, anywhere from seven furlongs to eighteen hundred, he can put the house on because uh, he's 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 well well ahead of his rating. The reason um, the reason the reason he scratched. I'm just reading here is the comment from the trainer: uh, insufficient recovery time. Yeah, uh, that is a concern um, because. It's been a good few weeks since he's since he's run, so I don't know if that really took took the wind out of him, uh, or if he didn't pull up well, or whatever the case, or maybe they've earmarked a race in a week or two's time. Mm. Uh, let's see if he's uh, possibly been nominated in the near future. Okay, well, we'll um, we'll, we'll watch it. So, so, what do you do now? What's our next move? Up, uh, I've I've just opted to go field club because I did make him a, a good thing, and uh, now. In my opinion, the race is thrown wide open. Obviously, Casimir comes out best weighted, but it's you can't say that he's performing at that high level anymore. So you can't have confidence in his his chances. Uh, Russian Rock is held by my bestie. Um, in saying that, he did win with a little bit in the hand last time. He was going away at the end, but on paper, he's got it all to do against my bestie. Then you got the filly in the race. A galactic star. She's only got 49 kilograms to shoulder. She's a very effective over the seven furlongs. If she's handy and she keeps rolling, she could fend them off. And then Russet Air, he had it all to do in the Cape Merchants last time. He, had, he was very badly weighted. He has performed over the seven furlongs in the past and he's fairly well treated over here. I wouldn't be shocked to see him win. And there's one or two others that certainly have chances. Um, I do like Darren's all silver operator. I just have a little bit more confidence once I've seen him cancer to pass. So I've opted to go field in the pit seat, Clyde. All right. Well, um, well, we'll obviously be in touch uh, once the horses go down and get your view on that. Uh, the, the ninth race on the card, the final leg of the pick six, then uh, the source sends a unique up of Marshall and Richard Free, the couple up at 16 to 10. Is there value at 16 to 10, Daryl? Or, uh, well, I mean, would you take um, it or, will he, or will he drift? Clyde, this is the best bets of the weekend. Possibly the best bet going into the festive period, and I don't even know what's yet to come. How's that? Mm, confident, <laughs> man. Like, sure. uh, he's, he's my derby host. Um, just go and watch his latest start. I mean, Richard Ferry was posing up until the 100, and he just squeezed him that last 100. He's so far ahead of the handicapper, it's right in flight. He only got a four-pound penalty. He's a lovely strapping son of twice over. There's so much more to come from him. And I think the fact that he's in a handicap and he's ahead of the handicapper, he'll take a power of beating. Like I say, banking bet, all bets, best bets of the card, uh, throw them into all your multiples for the weekend and go do the banking. So what is this what's going to start in the red? Um, well, let's see what happens. Eh? Because give me a star, I'm sure you'll have his supporters. Van Hunks is no slouch, but just based on what I've seen, Clyde, I have to be super, supremely confident with Sensor Unico. Okay, well, 
let's hope you're right. Uh, and if Darren ratifies that, well, then I suppose some of the guys will have to open the vault. Uh, Darren, what, what's your take on it? Yes, this is my best bet on the card. Um, I've watched him in the past. He's got the most amazing action. Um, he's got he's a dark bay uh, with a massive stride. But when I when I compare him to another horse, I compare him to do it again. With this, they both bought twice over. Funny enough, but they've got the the same sort of action. And um, he's he's also my derby horse. I think he's going to get better and better with racing. And um, I think he's going to take a lot of beating. Hopefully, there's a little bit of a pace on. I think that horse service ace or whatever goes to the front. And he'll be doing his best work late. He's going to love the long run in a kennel with as well. And from a good draw, I make sense a Unico a hard horse to beat. Um, the dangers come from horses like Give Me a Star. That one first time out the maidens, he really quickened up smartly to win that day. And he has to be the immediate danger. And then Van Hunks on his pedigree is going to enjoy the 1800 meter trip. So I've gone the three of them in the pick six, but I will be having a strike on Sensor Unico and my doubles and trebles for the weekend. So, so Darren, he would, so is this what's going to, will he start in the red? I mean, I need the question. I'm not answer. too sure. It's hard to say. They might come for the Kaname runner as well. So let's see. Okay, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. All right, well, that's good. Let's stay with you, Darren. There's your full page of information for everybody. Uh, racing's a turpentine naturally as well. And um, I know there's a great race on with War of Athena and Mal Moose. So that's going to be a very interesting race uh, at turpentine on Saturday. But, but let's go through your, your take, your uh, page. So my pick six, I haven't taken any bankers. I mean, if you want a banker, Senso Unico, it comes to a third of that price. But I've just played safe without any bankers. I've put Warrior in, leave him in the pick six. I want to get the toad favorite as well as have Silver Operator. So leave the scratching in the pick six. And then my best bet on the card, Senso Unico. My best multiple, I've thrown in Santa Teresa as a place. I think she'll be right there at the finish. Uh, Waterbury Lane to place. I think there are four places in that race. Uh, Silver Operator to play, Sensor Unico to win. And you're getting just over 20 to 1 that multiple for three places and a win. And then Turfentane, my best bet, Prince of Fire. I think he's going to love the 1400 meter trip. His last start where he got beat over 1000 meters, he was staying on very late. And on pedigree, the 14 is going to be right up his alley. And he looks to have tons of ability. And then race six, number two, War of Athena. She drops back in trip to the mile. And, you know, on the stand side track, she's going to warm up to the task. From the 400, she's going to start moving up to the field. And I think she'll just prove too strong for this lot. And she's well-weighted. Um, horses like Mal Moose, I was just too disappointed in his last start. I see that fits at the blinkers. But he's going to have to do a little bit more for, um, for me to see him as a danger to War of Athena. And then my value bet in Sherbet for the day is Gallic Chief. He's had two runs up the straight previously in Durban. He won by four lengths, and he ran third to Amberix in a grade one. Um, since then, he's been tried around the bend at Gravel. He's disappointed. He's pulled too hard around the bend on off, often a few occasions. And I think back up the straight at Turfontaine, new trainer, change of stables. I think Gallic Chief could prove good value. So the Turfontaine treble works out 20 to 1, and that looks a decent treble to take as well. Okay, so some interesting play from Darren's side. The Daryl? Hi, uh, my pick six comes to 2160. Unfortunately, Warrior has come out because my perm was originally 270 rand. But I've opted to go field there in that leg now. Uh, best bets, Marina, daughter of Savano. I think she's going to run her career best effort to date. Uh, she's improving with racing. Um, Perfect preparation coming into the Victor Stakes. She's going to be right there. And then Sensor Unico, my best bet of the weekend. So those are my two pick six bankers. And my insure bet, <coughs> excuse me, Clark, comes up in Turfantine, Sequoia. I know he beat a very, very meek, weak maiden field, but I actually believe he improved from his maiden to his handicap debut last time out. I thought that was a very decent effort where the race didn't go according to plan. He was trapped wide throughout. He's much better than that effort, Clyde. I see he's going to 
did the run of the race on Sunday or Saturday, sorry. And I think he is decent value at around about 10 to 1. Look for a forward run from Sequoia. is much better than his latest efforts. Okay. Uh, Daryl, whilst, we, whilst we, I'm with you, what's your take with War of Athena and uh, Malmoose? Uh, personally, I'm very, very concerned about Malmoose's uh, two comeback runs. Uh, he doesn't appear to be the same horse. Um, I'm not too sure if he's hemo concentrating or possibly needs to be gelded. Or maybe even the set of blinkers will, will uh, get the best of him uh, to try and bounce back to what we know he's capable of. But uh, yeah, War of Athena, cracking effort last time out. You can accept, expect an, a, another ball train by her. She's always give us her best. So you have to be with her because uh, she's, she's more consistent at this stage of their careers. Okay. Well, the professional double from uh, both Darren and uh, Daryl, Marina and Senso Unico, that works out to nine to two. If you can get that, that'll be a, I think that'll be a very good price if you get that right. Um, I'm, I'm glad that Darren has gone with Gaelic Chief, so have I in the fourth race. A little bit worried about uh, Grappler um, because I think he's definitely a runner and he's lost to start. He's in form as well, so... But um, Gaelic Chief, first round with Paul Matcher. Daryl, how do you, how do you, have you summarized the fourth of two for team just as a matter of interest? Um, I only managed to breeze, Kyle. I was out all day yesterday. Uh, okay, so but yes, he, yeah. he, is a, he is one of my shortlist picks for, in that race, yes. Yeah, I like him a lot. Okay, well, don't forget Durban. We want, uh, we're going to be there and uh, we'll be in touch with you, but we are coming to Durban by the sea, as you've, uh, we've told you before. So please join our WhatsApp group uh, to be part of that uh, live show. And um, we look forward to meeting all of you. There's the number again, just as a reminder uh, to get a hold of us. And uh, don't forget to join us every Friday night um, as we go forward and, and uh Hopefully you can get some winners for you. All right. Well, that was interesting. Some nice, inf good information that came out of this show. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, very confident talk, fighting talk from both of you. So hopefully we can, uh, we can bank some money this weekend then. Yeah, it's a cracking card to look forward to, Clyde. Um, so let's hope we can end on a high with Senso. Hope so. Thanks, Darren. Sorry about okay. there was a bit of a noise in the background. Neighbors busy doing weed eating. Do you do we do we do, do some of the do you use the, the machine, Daryl? Do you do gardening? Um, I do clot. Nice. Do you, Darren? Do you also I've do never you? done gardening in my life. Too busy watching the racing. I'm gonna go and talk to you now about just asking how this all works at this time right. of the morning. He's busy in the garden, we need to do doing whatever he's doing. I mean you have to get out into the How would you like? Life. I mean, how would you like to have those problems? You gotta go and do the weed eating in the I mean, would you, you like to? You have to get out to him. You have to clear your mind, you have to appreciate you have to appreciate uh, the life that you live. Um, and you can go walk around the race course rather, that'll help you. You can go see, get a nice uh, view of what's going on. I mean. I'll, I'll go talk to him now and have a chat with him about what the problem is. All right, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank nice you. to chat. Have a good uh, yeah, good See you soon. Eh? Yes, all uh, and all the best. Will I speak to you before Christmas? Christmas is when? Next week? What day is Christmas? No, we still got another show before Christmas. Have we? No, I don't yes. think we do. What yeah, day we is do. Christmas Day? Where are we now? Is this, today's the 17th. Oh, yes, we do. You're right. So Christmas Eve is our show, right? The 24th. Okay. All right. Good to talk Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.